Let's say you want to become a successful trader, but you're not sure who to listen to or what to do to become successful. You fear you're learning the wrong lessons or you're listening to the wrong people. This can be extremely frustrating, particularly for those who want so badly something that's important to them. Well, that's why we made this video. In this video, our top senior trader sits down with our newest hires at our trading desk in New York City and tells them what it takes to become a successful trader. Stick around and get some quality advice from one of the top short-term traders on the street. Hi, I'm Mike Bellafieri, Managing Partner of SMB Capital, a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan. I'm also the author of the trading classic, One Good Trade, and the playbook. Click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of our trading videos produced for the trading community. In this video, our top trader on our trading desk in New York City, and one of the best short-term traders on the street, shares what it takes to become a successful trader. And this trader answers questions from our newest hires at our trading firm on trading and covers topics from trader psychology to trading setups. Please pay special attention to this trader's ultimate goal. It may very well surprise you. If you want to learn three more real world setups that our top traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven figure big money earner, check out our free webinar that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click this link to sign up for the free webinar right now. You're gonna learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. I wanted to talk to you guys about you know starting out and kind of what it takes and, and the attitude you need and that sort of thing because uh, you know I think it, it's easy for Bella or Carlton or someone that you hear every day but um, I think I can give you a good perspective on those things so uh, you know if you guys look around the room you're in a class of what 10 12 people you know the reality of the situation is everyone thinks that they're gonna be you know the biggest best baddest trader but only maybe two of you guys are going to be around in two years and that's just the truth so you know if you want that to be you you know you really have to put in the right amount of work uh, and you have to have the right kind of approach to um, to the thing no one's gonna come in here and make a lot of money right away it's just not gonna happen no one ever has and you know no one ever will and it's gonna take a lot of everyday work and getting better every day as cliche as that is and a lot of screen time and experience um, you know to, to make it really so you know you see a lot of the experienced guys in here coming in right before the close you know they leave at four um, but you know the you know the reality is that's habits that have been formed over years and years and, and when we were all here at the beginning you know I was I was in here at 738 and I was staying until 536 every day reviewing doing anything I can to get better journaling reading everything I could get my hands on um, and you know now almost like an athlete if you're Roger Federer or something you're not going to be practicing 10 hours a day because your body can't handle it. Um, it, it you know things change but at the beginning that's really you know you, you want to be the person that's working the hardest and and the amount that you put in is uh, is going to pay so that's number one. Um, you know, number two about focusing on on what you should be learning about. You know, learning setups and trading, bull flags, bear flags, reading the tape, and all that will come with experience. Uh, it's not rocket science. Trading is not um, as far as an intellectual thing. You have to be smart enough, but it's not like you have to be an MIT grad or anything to be successful. Uh, it's really. Um, psychology that's 80 percent of the difference uh, with with people that make it and people that don't so I recommend you know reading everything you can about trading psychology you know Steenbarger who's in here has a number of good resources uh, Mark Douglas has a few books you know other books such as how we decide you know books on decision making and peak performance and that sort of thing uh, I highly recommend um, that way you can really put your your head around what you know the decision making process your emotional awareness your emotional intelligence and and those are the things that uh, 
successful traders have um, over over the people that don't make it. So um, the other thing is you might see me or you see Swang or Raf or any of the other traders on the desk and you know, oh, I want to be them, I want to be them. But you know, everyone has a different personality and you should be taking from us um, what you see that works and if it works for you, that's great. And especially at the beginning, yeah, you should be emulating some of the people that are making money, but uh, eventually you're going to really have to think about what works for you, what's your time frame, are you a quick thinker, are you a slow thinker, do you like research, uh, you know, maybe you like filters and, and technology, maybe you like more discretionary trading and, and you're more of a feel sort of, sort of guy like I am, and, uh, and that sort of thing you really have to learn about what you like and what works for you. So. Copying people is good to do at the beginning, but it's never going to get you all the way. So that's another another piece of advice. Um, what else? Um, I guess I don't really have too much. I, I will uh, open it up for you guys as far as questions about starting out, about certain stocks, whatever you want, and then maybe we can start a little bit of a discussion that way. So anyone? Bueller? So I have a question about the pot stocks. Uh, sure. I've seen all guys people can be shorting this for a while, mm -hmm. but they keep making all time highs, especially TLR wise, keep each other's dress, especially today, makes some all time high again. Mm -hmm. So like what's your time like thought process behind this? Like when this stock doesn't show any weakness like in their general value patterns, but keep just trying to short it. Um Yeah, I guess there's a, a few thoughts. You know, for that one it will be eventual short and the way I'm approaching it is I've kind of been scaling into it and I've been buying calls to hedge out my risk. So basically um, I've kind of been shorting at 80s into today uh, and then I'm building a position and then I have kind of a half size position and then intraday when it ever breaks down I'll try to add a lot more size. So you know these are the sort of stocks I do well in over time and it's not going to be an overnight thing. Um, but if you're trading it intraday, there's nothing wrong with going long them. And, and if you see the momentum for me, something that's come, uh, the way I'm looking at it is more of a bigger picture trade and not like a one minute, five minute, 10 minute uh, trade. Cause uh, you know, this thing IPO at $20 about two months ago and it IPO near, near fair value. And now it's worth seven or $8 billion and it's just not going to stay up here. And it's, it's a big short squeeze. Um, so it's a matter of time and, and, I'm kind of structuring it so I have a few weeks for it to play out basically. So, but that's that said, you know, there's nothing wrong with you see intraday a little consolidation, there's shorts trap and you go long and 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 ride it out a little bit. Um, if something's up two, three days in a row, I just wouldn't be hanging on to it if it if it goes against you. That's that's the only thing. Um, anyone else? Yes, can you try to talk about like trading psychology as it relates to like when you're looking at a stock and it seems like let's look like let's just say it, it looks like it's going to break out and then it just pops and fails mm -hmm. um how do you like get your head around like like how to think the other way and realize like that might happen or like do you realize like, do you know who like causes those moves and like it just seems like you're trading a lot of things like when you think something's going to happen and it's like the setup, the exact opposite things happen, so you have to change your mind. Sure. Your mind. Uh, a few things. For one, whenever you're getting into a trade, you know, it's never, it's never going to work out how you want. The, the nature of trading is you, you, you are the casino, so you want to make high probability bet, bets that have high expectancy. So something that's going to work 40% of the time, but it gives you four to one risk reward is still a good bet if you do it a thousand times. So a lot of your trades aren't going to work and so you don't want to get into a attitude of thinking it's going to work perfectly and then that gives you a little bit of a bias to how it should should act so for one you want to have if then situations for a variety of number of things and you know where you're wrong on every trade and and just because it breaks out and goes down doesn't mean it's immediately going to be a short um, and so that's fine if you're playing a breakout pattern and it doesn't work it, you know there's it could be a really good trade, you know, and when you're evaluating your trades at the end of the day, you should praise yourself for taking that trade, not beat yourself up because you lost money. Um, so yeah, you want to have multiple scenarios and don't don't get uh, 
And you know, sometimes your if-then scenario could be like, well, you know, if it goes above the level, I'll buy it and hit out right below it. And then if it gets above that high again, I'll buy it again and I'll give it a little bit of wider stop with half, half size and that could be your plan. So you wanna have a more detailed plan is probably uh, my answer to that. Um, can you think of any example where you found yourself developing what you call like a bad habit in your trading and possibly how you overcame that bad habit? Sure, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I have bad habits and um, I think the good thing about that is I'm aware of them and, I, uh, in, and then I can nip them in the butt as they happen. So the way I'm kind of finding out my bad habits is just reviewing all my trades throughout the day. Then all of a sudden, two or three days in a row, you see, oh, I made the same mistake and, and, and it's costing me a lot of money. Well, then I'm going to end up making that my goal for the next week or two. And every day I'm gonna evaluate myself on it and I'm gonna think about I'm gonna think about it throughout the day, I'm gonna think about it before the day, and that way as it's happening and as you practice more, you're gonna be more and more aware of you doing it, and then you'll be able to kind of uh, change your habit um, and you know give yourself a reward if you're doing if you're doing good on it. So one of my bad habits is trying to trade out of a position, you know, basically add scale out or, or average in or whatever just to kind of um, get out of the position and 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 in taking that one step further, just starting my scales and things too early if I have a strong idea. Uh, so you know, I, over time I've gotten better. I'm still never going to be perfect, but I'm aware of those because of doing the reviews and journaling every day. So that that's the way that I would try to get better at that. So you have a really good trading day and you feel like that day you've seen everything clearly, you made money, mm -hmm. and uh, everything just went well, and then you come the next day, it's the complete opposite, and you feel like you didn't execute anything correctly, mm -hmm. couldn't see anything clearly, how do you sort of handle that situation? Well, it becomes a lot easier when you have a lot of experience for one, but um, how do you handle that situation? Well, you want to think about, you know, every day, especially the really good days and especially the really bad days, you always want to view that as an opportunity to learn. You know, if you leave a day and you're like kicked ass, you know, there's always going to be a better day. You can't be too high on it. And if you, you know, had your worst day ever, you know, that's not going to be your worst day ever. You're probably going to have a worse day. So trading is about kind of keeping yourself not too high, not too low. And above all, just learning from the situation. So if you had a terrible day and you couldn't see things, well, why? Were you not focused? Did you not get enough sleep? Uh, what happened throughout the day? Were you down money and then you tried to make it back in a revenge trade? Were you up money and you traded too tight and you got death by a thousand? You know, it's, it all comes back to what I said before. You know, what are your patterns and behavior? And if you're, if you're journaling them every day, you should get better at making those days less frequent because you'll notice the patterns throughout the day that lead to that. So, you know, more than anything, uh, a losing day you can view as, as kind of tuition to the market and, and that's how you want to look at it and there's a lot of information in it. So some of your best days for your development can be your worst days and at the time they don't feel great, but um, that's what takes you to the next level. You know, I had a day where I lost you know, three hundred thousand dollars in one day, and that sounded, you know, that was a terrible day. But you know, when I came back from that, I was so much more resilient, and I could trade so much more size because I had come back from it. And and in the end, it actually was a, a beneficial experience to me. So um, that's the perfect example of that. Um, your uh, long-term discretionary trader, right? And how do you keep track of your trades and each over time, like? Um, the, I mean, the age might wear off over time, and since you're taking so little trades over the year, then uh, by the end of the year, then you have wasted one year, and then uh, you realize that you have to, you know, the age is actually wearing off. Um, well, I'm not necessarily a long-term trader. I, you know, most of my trades are within a week, you know, no longer than two or three weeks on, on rare situations. Um, but you know, you, you should be plugging your trades into TraderView and then uh, developing your database of trades. I, we used to have a few uh, proprietary systems where we could spit out some numbers, which I'm actually going to probably um, try to get back. But uh, but yeah, TraderView is a good way to you know look at your stats. Um, I always look at my stocks, which stocks I'm making money in, which stocks I'm losing money in, thinking about why and what were the characteristics. Did they share some characteristics and 
you know, I, quite frankly, I should be better about stat crunching. I just, over time, have gotten a little comfortable. But you guys should be putting all your trades in trade review, especially as you're starting. And don't jump to too, too many conclusions from a small sample size. But as you kind of have six months of experience or a year of experience, you know, look at what stocks you do well, what's the liquidity, what's the price, um, you know, what's the range of them, what's the RVOL, um, how are you doing on small caps, market stocks, earnings plays, that sort of thing. Yeah, you want to track, track those sort of things. Were there like A plus trades uh, you used to use, then uh, you just threw it away recently because uh, the age is no longer there? Um, uh, you know, I have such, I don't think that there's a, I'm not like a set into one trade. So basically how I look at it is I kind of have a bag of tricks, you know, 15 or 20 different tricks and the market environment's constantly changing and it's all about adapting to what's working to the market environment more than my edge just disappearing. So more so I'd be kind of paying attention to, oh, maybe for a week, uh, this trade that I'm making is not working, you know, all breakouts are failing and I'm looking through charts every night and I'm seeing certain patterns that just aren't working anymore and, and then I'm trying to adapt to the, uh, the next patterns that are. So it's more so that than, you know, other, other traders, for example, are very reliant on like imbalanced trades and, you know, that's an edge that can disappear for sure. Um, I, you know, I, I don't really look at it like that. I'm, I'm more of a flow trader with kind of the market environment, so it's a little different. Uh, how do you separate like, different <coughs> sessions of the day? Like the one trading day might be into mornings, like normal trade be work better, but mm -hmm. you don't much time in the afternoon. Sometimes the strategy doesn't work so long. Sure. Just how do you separate like those two? Yeah, uh, in the morning you want to be a lot quicker, taking profits. You can do more tape reading. You know, uh, things touch a lot of prices, so you can move around a lot more in in, in stocks, and then. You know, as you get through the morning and into the afternoon, usually I'd probably have a few ideas that worked in the morning that I'm leaving trailers on and I might be recycling shares in them. So if they're dipping, it's a long, I might be buying some back and selling them on rallies and that sort of situation. And then, you know, playing less breakouts, not paying highs or hitting lows in the middle of the day. Um, doing more with the trades I already had on and not as many new trades probably. And then as you get into the close, things tend to ten, uh, trend into the close. So last hour of the day, you don't want to fade anything that's spiking. Um, in the middle of the day, on the other hand, if something gets you know really far from VWAP on either side, you might want to think of a mean version trade. So yeah, over time, you know, you, you kind of break those days and you have different kind of playbook for different times in the day, basically. So I would just wouldn't do too much momentum and tape reading and reading into every little tick in the middle of the day. You'll tear yourself up. Um, can, can someone just have edge like in the morning? Because I tend to have good trades in the morning, but then towards like 12 and on, I give everything back, so I'm over trading and just... Sure, so you're probably, you know, you like probably momentum and all that stuff. And certainly there's a lot of traders that do 90% of their trading in the first hour of the day. And, um, there are times where things are completely dead in the middle of the day and, you know, again, you want to use that as information. So the same trades you're making in the morning that look like the same trades in the afternoon actually aren't probably because of the time of day and the volume and the pace. Um, so just try to trade things that have more pace in the, in the box, like, you know, things are fluttering more and more volume. and. Uh, and yeah, that's certainly a possibility, but I think, you know, as a, you're starting out, you can just use that as information and try to get better and try to figure out what works in the middle of the day and maybe use that as journaling or other things that can kind of make you successful and not necessarily trading all the time just because you want to trade. Uh, no trade is sometimes the best trade, so. Anyone else? What, like, motivates you outside of trading itself? Um, you know, I was never motivated in trading by money. You know, that is as cliche as it sounds. You know, I've seen everyone that comes in that wants to, you know, drive a nice car or do this or that. It just doesn't work out for them. Um, so I like the challenge. I've always liked playing games and I like the fact that trading can always be a better version of yourself. And so, uh, you know, there's no ceiling. You can have these goals and you can always set goals and be be in the process of chasing them and it's it's definitely very fulfilling to 
to uh, you know set a goal and work at it every day and then finally get there and then you know you set another one and that whole process of the chase is really what's what's great um, so yeah that that motivates me and, and I, I want I want to be the best trader like you know out best short-term trader there is and that's what motivates me now and the money just happens if I'm successful at that basically I just, uh, I've been here for a week mm -hmm. because uh, my situation, I think, is, I think, different from you guys. Sure. Because uh, I'm living in Spain, working full time in uh, real estate technology. Okay. And I'm just starting out with this, uh, like, a year. But sure. Because, like, I have only the uh, last uh three hours of the u.s market so from uh, one to four sure just to um, trade and uh, i came here because i want to really find out if it's realistic for me to um try to trade the clothes so if sure. i can find uh, any type of um, uh, setup or sure. a, step a step or something that I could help me uh, research in advance and do the trade for the close yeah. that day. So I don't know really if it's up. Uh, I thought that it could be possible, but it's uh, again here because I really need to find out if sure. that's a realistic goal or something. Uh, yeah, I mean, there are certain setups I think that you could gravitate towards. I, I mean, I think it's going to be a difficult proposition to only be able to see a few hours of the market. You know, it takes a lot of experience and a lot of screen time to really uh, make it work. What I might recommend is just doing some swing trades, basically, and, and looking at daily charts and find things that are closing strong, that aren't too extended, and, and looking for maybe continuation for a couple days and some multi-day trading. I think if you want to just sit down at the close and day trade for three hours, you know, that's just going to be really hard. And yeah, just yeah, being, yeah. Uh -huh. being brutally honest, no, that's no, going to be a no, difficult no, no, proposition. It's fine, it's fine. Um, but I think if you kind of do more swing trading and maybe you can log in mm -hmm. uh, for just a couple minutes at work on the open and manage your positions or put stops in, um, I think I might look at uh, alpha trends also as, as a good resource yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for that sort of trading. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I would recommend maybe, maybe trying that out a little bit. But yeah, you know, if you want to do trading imbalances and stuff like that, then you might be able to do just the close. And some of the people in Austin just trade the morning and the close, but you know it's going to be hard, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And if you want to stop by one of these days, I can show you maybe some patterns that I think might work for you. Yeah. Okay. Good. Sure. Mm -hmm. What's something that uh, maybe a quant type trader could learn from a discretionary trader? Well, I think that uh, you know, matching a discretionary trader and a quant is often a great thing because uh, the discretionary guy can kind of come up with the patterns that the quant guy would kind of program. So, um, you know, the disc discretionary trader says, I'm looking at this, 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 and then the quant guy says, oh, I can tabulate that with this setup, um, and then I can give you ideas to model, basically, um, rather than just kind of shooting fish in a barrel uh, throwing numbers at it. So um, I think that's a good a good mix. Uh, yeah. So how do you adjust your mentality when you have a big idea? It's like saying you think this one is big shorts. I just keep going higher and keep giving you highs. Uh, and you have big drawdowns. Like you just keep kind of like, if I was like, in that position, I would doubt my position, like saying my idea will, would be wrong or maybe I'm in you know, wrong position or something like that. Right. Just, how did you adjust that? Well, I mean, for one, I'm not just blindly shorting it. You know, I'm always going to have uh, a number where I could lose, and I'm always going to, you know, have a plan for if I'm wrong, and I'm not going to be stubborn about taking my losses. Like this particular trade in TLRY, you know, I'm I'm completely hedged out if it gets above, like a um, 103 or something. I'll have my max loss on the trade, and and I'm not necessarily going to be adding to it at that point, or I'll shorten my time frame. So. You know, the, it sometimes can be hard sticking with something, but I think when you have enough experience and you've you've really nailed a few of those trades and you have a really deep understanding for them, then it gives you a little bit more resilience to stick with it. Um, 
and I know you know this thing will be in the 60s at some point um, this year uh, probably sooner rather than later and it's just based on experience of other other things um, but I could completely be wrong and I'll I'll take my licking and I'll move on to other things um, so it's a hard balance of knowing when to give up. I think as a newer trader, maybe you want to have a three strike rule or something along those lines. Um, you know, I think that I, when I see the gap between the fundamental price and the price that it's trading and it keeps on getting wider, you know, it, I, it just becomes a better setup and maybe you have to put a max loss on it or shorten your time frame, like I said, or, um, hedge out, whatever you got to do, but uh, I'm always going to stick with those setups because they don't come around that often. So would you feel like it's better to use like options to trade those kind of ideas? No, not necessarily. I think more than anything, you probably want to wait for you ha uh, you know a really good level to trade against. Um, so just maybe miss the first drop and then you'll have a, a good high to short against. Uh, and you know, in this case, it seemed like the high was in, and now it's back up there. It's not often that that happens, but just wait. It'll probably be tomorrow or the next day. Um, let it have its first three, four, five, six dollar drop, and then try to find a way in. That would be my advice, rather than trying to top tick it without a plan. That just adding with no because it's up too much is never. It's never a, a trade. That's how you blow up. Anyone else? What if you get an idea wrong, you get up, and then the next day, and you're, you're, I mean, it shows that you're right. For example, uh, I think it was NASDAQ during the internet bubble, you went above 2000, and then you went back down afterwards and never came back again. Yeah. So, so would, you get it, get, would you get back into it? Or would sure, I mean, always getting stopped out of things and getting back in, certainly. Um, a lot of times trades take three, four, or five times, tries a lot of the time, you know. As long as it's, we're, as long as the setup is worth trying it that many times, it's not like a earnings play and you're just buying the breakup, hitting the breakdown and a little, little stupid intraday chart like that. But like this TLRY for me is a A plus situation that I'm gonna try four or five times and I've gotten stopped out. I've, I've made a lot of money on it, then I've lost a lot of money on it, but I'm gonna stick with it and, and try it with some tight stops until I get it basically. Um, so yeah, I'm never gonna just try something once and I'm always gonna allocate risk to have have to try it multiple times. Go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of our trading videos produced for the trading community. And please add your feedback in the comments section for what videos you'd like for us to produce next and what you found helpful from this video. From all of us at SMB, trade well.